So I was working over there as uh, what they call a political advisor, which meant my job was to um, uh, build relationships with the guys in the turbans, the provincial chief and the uh, tribal, tribal leaders around the place, uh, which meant getting outside the wire a couple of times a week, uh, which you just don't do over there without 12 or 15 of your closest friends. <laughs> because of the security threat. We, we tend to travel either in uh, foot patrols uh, with each man spaced about 10 metres apart to mitigate the effect of a blast or in vehicle patrols, uh, you know, in convoys um, with the rear vehicles following and the tracks of the front vehicles just to reduce the risk of hitting a pressure plate. Um, and uh, either way, we don't go anywhere without the sappers. I don't know if you've heard these terms, sappers. It's a, it's a military term uh, that goes back to the 15th century, I think, for combat engineer. And uh, ever since the medieval times, they got all the crap jobs in war, like that's why they call sappers, because they dig the sap, the trenches. Uh, pretty inglorious stuff. And in Iraq and Afghanistan, their job is to travel at the front of a convoy and look down the road for anything that might be an IED, you know, through all the dust and the rubbish and all that stuff that's naturally on the road there. And if they see something suspicious, uh, they'll get the dog out in the, mu in, the, in the metal detector and they'll move towards it rather than away from it. And if they find something, they'll get a paintbrush out and they'll dust, you know, they'll brush the dust off it and deal with it, you know, detonate it in place or dismantle it. And so it's a job that takes a sort of unquestioning kind of courage that I've got to say I came to really respect. Um, uh, not the least because of which I relied on, I relied on these guys for my mobility to get, to get around. Um, but because of the dangers of the job, we tend to lose a couple of them a year. We've lost a couple this year already, and we lost um, two last year too. And, uh, uh, and whenever a boy out at the forward operating bases gets killed, everyone back on the main base finds out pretty quickly, and uh, we all feel it in the guts. I mean, the first thing you know is you'll, you'll go to call your missus or your, or your mum on the welfare phone line that they have set up there, and uh, you'll find the lines being cut, which is what they do to enable the commanding officer to let, let family know about it without them finding out in the news. Um, then they'll bring the guy back in on a helicopter into the Roll 2 medical facility where they have a um, shipping container with a refrigeration unit sort of passes for a morgue and the guy's mates will post a vigil outside of that morgue um, all day and all night for three or four days until they get ready to organise the repatriation of the remains in a ceremony. And then we all file into the Apache aircraft hangar and the Padre will lead a service for the guy and the guy's mates will get up and they'll speak about what he was like when he was out in the Terps in Brisbane or Townsville or about the guy's girlfriend and his family back home. You know, and you sit there with your friends, but quite alone with your thoughts, thinking about the family back home. And, and the whole little leaf, and you're just a little bit glad it's not you in that metal box. And anyway, then we all line up, we all line the road out to the Hercules aircraft, talking about 3,000 Afghan, Dutch, American, Australian soldiers on this dusty road out to the Herc, and we salute as the casket passes by in a, in, a, in a parade sort of thing. Anyway, we lost a couple of sappers on June 7th of last year and uh, I wrote this next song after the memorial service and uh, we sang it for the first time at the barbecue area, Poppies, uh, on the weekend. Uh, it's called The Sapper's Lullaby. Two caskets passed us by and followed the padre onto the herc and out into the pale summer sky. We walked back to Poppy's and then went 
back to work with the dust still in our eyes. So soldiers, sing me your sapper's lullaby. You give it your all, no one if you should fall. But all good things must die. These young engineers, his job is to clear the road so we may pass. They're always out front. And when they bear the brunt, man, it happens fast. Sapper D. Smith had a wife and a son, the apple of his eye. Snowy Morland was just twenty-one. Way too young to die. So soldiers, sing me your sapper's lullaby. You give it your all, no one you should fall. But all good things must. Go call your mother, call your old man on that welfare line and tell him you love him while you still can. Cause all good things must die. So Master.